Welcome back to the workshop. Been a little while between drinks, sorry about that. A little bit going on, uh, lockdown finished, so the engineer's dream of zero social interaction has ended. Uh, my latest non-vehicle fabrication project has uh, taken a little bit of extra time. And uh, on top of that, my wife's V-Dub Golf uh, blew a head gasket. Should have bought her something uh, Italian and reliable. Anyway, that turned out not to be a head gasket, but a bent valve. But that's another boring story. But don't fear, Stratos work has continued. Nothing uh, super exciting or video worthy, but uh, why don't we go around and check out what's been happening. I have installed some bonnet pins on the rear hatch. We can finally fill our fuel tanks with the addition of a fuel filler neck. We need to get three flexible fuel lines from this side of the car to the engine side. So I made up a little protective tray to uh, reduce stone impacts and keep everything nice and neat. That brings the fuel lines around to the engine bay side where I have added a fuel filter. And tucked away down there underneath the filter, we have our fuel pressure regulator and a little solenoid valve, which can divert the return fuel back to whichever tank we like. I finally bit the bullet and added the side intrusion bars and their associate gussets, which marks the final completion of the cage. I found a in no way controversial place to store our Safety triangles. All the way from the UK, we have a brand new uh, quick ratio steering rack. And underneath that, I have mounted uh, the electronically controlled uh, battery kill switch we'll be running. For the required external control of that kill switch, I have mounted this nice little waterproof flush mount push button switch. And so we can quickly remove the entire rear clamshell. I've added this little DT connector for the tail lights and milled up a bracket to hold the other end in place so it's a one-handed operation. Unfortunately, the very cool door pockets no longer fit with the side intrusion bars. So I fabricated a slim down aluminium version. And so the navigator's got somewhere to put his in-flight reading material, a little pace note holder. That slides down between the seats. So drive shaft fix number two. These are the hubs that we're planning on running. They're uh, off a Peugeot 306 or a 205 GTI. I got these because they've got the same 108 uh, PCD. Uh, to suit the alpha wheels. They run a quite a large bearing. Uh, it's actually the same size as the original alpha V6 front wheel bearing. And they've got a 25 toothed spline. That was important because the drive shafts that were in the car uh, are also a 25 tooth spline. They're off a Lancia Beta. But unfortunately, they don't actually fit. They're either a different pressure angle or a different tolerance on the OD of the, uh, of the, of the uh, drive shaft. I could try putting this in the lathe and skimming off a little bit off the teeth to see if it does slide in, but I think we'll go a different way. The first option was to get uh, the CV joint that suits the Peugeot hub. That obviously fits and then I was going to get a special axle made that suits the inner spline of this CV joint and the alpha spline uh, at the other end to match onto the, um, the diff outputs. On receiving this CV I noticed that the internal spline for the axle is a very very small diameter. 
Uh, so I wasn't super keen on using those. So after a fair bit of searching and quite a few emails, I've located somewhere locally that actually has a brooch to match this spline. I went down to see them the other day and we had a look at the hubs. They checked the hardness and uh, it's fine for machining. And it looks like there is just enough material to machine out the old 25 tooth spline out of this hub and then brooch in the new 27 tooth spline to match this CV joint. Uh, I think that will be by far the best solution. We'll end up with some really chunky CV joints and axles uh, and be able to bolt our 108 PCD wheels on. To save a little bit of cash, she said, I can machine out the, uh, the splines myself and he'll just run the brooch through it. So that's the job for today, over to the lathe. I've just got the hub mounted in the three jaw for the moment. I just want to take a quick facing cut across this little edge here uh, to square it up with the, uh, the machine surface at the back. We'll then take it out, put the four jaw on and center it all up. But this will help keep everything square. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. I hate changing chucks. <sighs> so straight up, it's already pretty close. So we shouldn't have too much trouble dialing it in. Very good there. And pretty good out there. So I'm calling that good. She's done up. Time to uh, start boring out those splines. And that's not in gear. So we're at 27.13, just do a quick idiot check, the Ver verniers agree. So we've got a tolerance of 27.38, 27.55. We'll go for 27.4. Uh, I don't think it's going to clean up the uh, the old spline at that, um, but it's such a wide tolerance, we'll be able to make another cut pretty accurately and stay within that, I think. What's that, mate? I'm down here. Yeah, I just got to let me do this one cut on the lathe, and I'll be with you in a sec, all right? All right. OK, 
Okay, so I've taken it to 27.52 on the, uh, the larger side of the tolerance and still quite a bit of the old spline there. Well, quite a bit, I mean, not that much. I think it'll be okay. Um, most of it will be cut out by the brooch, but because there's a 25 to 27 to spline, um, you know, one or two of them will probably end up at the root of the of the new spline, but uh, it's the best we can do, I think. And there we have it, two re-splined hubs. Only took about a week, and um, because I machined out the old spline, the price was very, very reasonable. Um, only issue is... They don't actually fit. But that's okay, we knew that. It turns out that the cutting tool the man used uh, was slightly under tolerance for that type of spline. It must have been made for a special job. And these splines are slightly over tolerance. Hardly anything at all, but it's enough so that it, the two won't meet up. Just to double check that, I, I quickly just brushed past the splines with a, uh, a file, and that was enough. Just a few strokes on each spline was enough for the, uh, for the hub to start. So uh, it's very, very close. So the next thing I wanna do is try and pull these CVs off the axle, get the CV housing in the lathe, and then we'll just clean up the spline so that we get a nice tight fit into our new hub. Did I say just pull the CV off the axle? This is turning out to be a mole of a job. This was my first attempt. Uh, screwed up this bearing separator unit onto the axle. There's a couple of little ribs on the axle for the uh, CV boot to um, grip onto. So I clamped up around those and I made up this tuning fork arrangement that I could squash down with the nut and pull the CV off the axle. Looked like it was working, but uh, unfortunately I could not get that little circlip to pop through. So I think something a little bit more aggressive is required. I think I have all the parts made up of axle puller kit number two. I've made up this little collar with uh, an internal uh, groove and that sits over the little grooves in the axle that are designed to keep the CV boot in place. We'll then use the bearing separator to uh, clamp all that together. Uh, that little collar just slides down and makes sure that we are pushing up against uh, the spline fitting and not transferring any of the force through the balls. As you can see, to save time, I've already covered everything in grease. Man, I thought wheel bearings were bad. So the idea is we put our little collar on first and then drop the axle through our hole. Then, and this is a job where it would be nice to have someone else around. Okay, we just need <clears throat> we just need two more things. And okay.
Amazingly, I did manage to liberate one CV off an axle after all that. Uh, but of course, I didn't get it on camera. So I've cleaned it up, uh, put in a lathe, dialed it in and took a whisper cut off the spline, hardly anything. And as predicted, we have a very nice fit. So with that little accomplishment uh, under my belt, I thought I would ruin my day and attempt to press the bearings into our uprights. I've had the uprights machined. Uh, unfortunately, the surface finish isn't fantastic. Uh, it was a bit of an issue machining them uh, because of all the welding. There were some hard spots. Uh, it's to size, it's just a little bit rough. Uh, so I think it'll be okay. So I had the bearings in the freezer for a couple of days and uh, preheating the other upright with the uh, hot air gun. Let's see how we go. Going straight, you fuck up a thing. Well, surprisingly, that went in there quite nicely. Next thing to do is see if I got the circlet groove in the right spot. I'm calling that a win. So I think that'll have to do for this episode. I don't want to push the drive hubs into the uh, bearings just yet. Now that I know I'm going to use them, uh, I think I might clean them up a little bit more and uh, make them look a little bit more presentable and uh, pushing them into the bearings is a bit of a one-way trip. Uh, sorry about the delay in uh, episodes, uh, but I think I'll be able to punch out a few more at regular intervals now. Uh, only a couple more jobs to go and we can send this bad boy off to get some paint. Getting exciting. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.